Hi, everyone, and welcome to Firmly Planted Wellness Live. I am so excited that you are here joining us today because you are in for a special treat. If you've ever needed a pep talk, today is the day that you are going to get that from our guest. But first, I want to share with you that our mission, my mission, is each and every week to bring to you an amazing woman who is serving women to help them live well in some area of their life. It could be health related, it could be business, it could be relationships. It could just be our own relationship with ourselves, And, you know, we really just want to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves so we can better do all the things that we've been called to do. And um, if we are meeting for the first time, then my name is Lisa Figgins, and it's my mission to help women live well. Uh, I believe that when we prioritize our wellness and taking care of ourselves with a simple plan, we can finally turn that knowing into doing, and then we can look, feel, and give our best. And today I want to introduce you guys to Tish Hammond, who is an amazing woman. So welcome, Tish. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Well, thank you. Let me just give you guys a quick bio on this, okay? Tisha loves Jesus, her family, and community, and that shows in from the very first time that she and I connected. She's actually known as a small business cheerleader, and she's an international best-selling author of the book Daily Devotionals for Entrepreneurs. So if you are an entrepreneur or you know an entrepreneur or you would like to be an entrepreneur, you're definitely going to want to make sure you get your hands on that. She's also the host of a YouTube um, show called Pep Talk that I had an opportunity to be a guest on. And so we'll make sure that we link to that um, after we're done talking today. Um, but Tish, just want to welcome you. And in your words, tell us a little bit more about how you serve women and how you help them live well. Well, I am going to tell you that in 2020, there are still too many stories of women living poor. Mm -hmm. And when I say poor, I mean passing over opportunities repeatedly uh, in the, the career path known as entrepreneurship uh, or as small business owners. And so one of my goals is really to make a connection with women around the world and to encourage them to influence their own economies by developing small businesses and really pulling out that entrepreneurial spirit that is typically innate to most of us. And I do that in a variety of ways and platforms. Thank you for the opportunity to talk a little bit about that today. Oh my goodness, yes. And I think right now with everything going on around us, a lot more people are open to this idea of entrepreneurship and what that can look like in their life because let's be honest, the way we shop is changing, the way we communicate is changing, the way we earn an income is changing the way we school, you know, so many different things. So tell me a little bit, as you've been working with women, as you've been working with entrepreneurs, whether they're already in a business or whether they're thinking about starting them, what challenges are you seeing right now that maybe sometimes are getting in the way from either someone starting or from someone being successful with a business? Yeah, well, the recurring theme often is the woman herself is in the way. And that is that, that inner voice that just, lives to defeat us. And oftentimes we pay a lot of attention to it and give it free rent in our heads. Mm -hmm. So when we're able to join in a community like this, Lisa, where we have mentors, where we are observing and watching and witnessing and having discussions with women who've done the things we're trying to do, uh, when we're taking in new information from reading new books and things of that nature, we really can influence one another to be better and to really to gain a wealth of knowledge and information that will keep us from being poor. Poor, again, being passing over opportunities repeatedly. Entrepreneurship is an entirely wonderful and frustrating way to, uh, <laughs> to improve your situation. And I, I just wanna share the encouragement uh, behind the growing joys and growing pains of it all. Yes. So tell me about your journey. Tell us a little bit about your journey. What have, what have some of those growing pains been? What have the, some of those growing joys been? And maybe how have you overcome the, those pains to keep moving towards those joys? Yeah, well, let's start uh, with the pain of it all. So growing, jo growing pains that I've experienced literally were the struggle between working full-time for someone else in a career that I love and managing my business part-time far less hours than I really wanted to. Mm -hmm. And working in that transition for three years and, and having to just come to a decision one day for me, that was April 3rd, 
2018, something has to give. Mm. For me, it was the full-time career that I spent 21 years in that I walked away from. And believe me, it was not easy. It took years of prayer. It took years of financial planning. It took years of discussion. I needed household, my kin and our children to understand, hey, I'm, this six-figure salary is, is, might be impacted for a little while uh, until I can get things back up and running. And, and literally for the first you know, year or so, I spent a lot of time thinking about, wow, I just walked away from a, a bi-weekly paycheck. That was very good. Um, and then what do I do with the best laid plans? My plans didn't work out. Uh, I, the business didn't grow once I got into it full-time as fast as I thought it would. And really leaning on God in prayer and marketing and building a team. I learned very early on, I cannot grow this business alone. Mm -hmm. And so I took to LinkedIn. That was my first real online community. And LinkedIn was so active and engaging. It really helped me build an audience and a platform and it turns out that a lot of people want to hear a positive message from somebody nowadays. So what I do fits in well. Yes, that's so perfect. I think you're right. There's so much negativity out there. And, you know, even as you shared in the beginning, a lot of times that negativity is in our own head. And so we need that coach. We need somebody outside of us that's really going to help us get outside of ourselves and to, and to focus on what's true and what we want to move towards. Um, so I, I love that. So um, you, you, that led you to, you know, writing a book and, and sharing on um, your YouTube show and, and different things like that. What do you feel like are some messages that, that women need to hear right now? Definitely a message that I'm taking in every day from my mentor, who is Dr. Lisa Wicker of the Career Master Network, is, look, you can't afford to play small. And playing small in this world serves no one. It, it does not serve you personally. It doesn't serve the community. And so don't be ashamed that you have gifts and talents that the world could use and needs to hear about. Don't hide that. And don't support uh, a lot. Of, you know, we lean on being modest and, and don't want to appear to have an ego or to be cocky or conceited. And it's none of that. When you are willingly and joyfully sharing your gifts that have been given to you and living out your purpose. So that is what I would say is that at some point, like right about in here, definitely in here, you're getting messages. You know you are. You're getting messages that say, okay, you have to close that door. You have to turn that page. As my friend Denise Cochran said, you have to turn the knob and, and walk in. It, if you don't have a seat at the table, go ahead and build the table yourself and bring some extra chairs for other people. It's, it's not time to play small. It's time to use your influence uh, to better your community, better your family, and start sharing positive messages. We need that now more than ever. I love that. And I love like the building the table yourself and, and bringing the extra chairs, right? Not just making it a table for one or two, but having that vision that's going to just make space for other people uh, to be in there. I think that's, that's beautiful. And as women, don't we tend to crave community like that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I know that uh, I am fascinated, particularly by LinkedIn and, and YouTube um, of a growing affinity for Facebook and Instagram is, is just awesome as well. But it's because of the engagement. It's the commentary. It's the intellect that I am craving, that I'm seeking from those who are making connections with me and, and commenting on posts. It's the matchmaking that I want to do. I hear that there's a problem or an issue. Okay, I know somebody in the community that has a solution or has another listening ear. And you pair that together, we're unstoppable. When we just keep adding on and linking together and growing this and creating these kind of arms and bands that stretch around the world, I mean, if you look at this sign behind me, it says she's going places, right? I love that. That's, that's my vision board. My vision board doesn't have cars on it anymore. It doesn't have a big old house on it anymore. It doesn't have a stack of money. No, it's to get the message around the world that you can influence your own personal economy by developing businesses right where you are. 
And nowadays, those businesses will be best served if they start on a digital platform. And exactly. when, the, when the world reopens again safely, it'd be great if we could go back to having brick and mortars. Mm-hmm. I really am praying for our business owners who are tied into leases and contracts. I, I am one of them tied into leases where the building is, is not even useful right now. People yes. just aren't coming because they don't feel safe. But thank God that I founded my business on a digital platform first and that we have video technology like this where we can stay in touch um, 24-7. Right, right. And it allows us to have a big reach. You know, when we have a brick and mortar, it's usually people that are within our zip code. But when we have something like this, we have a digital platform like, like both of us do, we can reach people anywhere, right? And so that that's exciting. So, you know, it's, if there's someone who's you know, just needing some encouragement, wanting to move forward, you know, what, do you have any tips or practical suggestions for her if, you know, to, to start thinking and moving in that direction? Absolutely. It's, it's very easy, but sometimes we make this very complicated. So I just want to add some reassurance here. There's this nasty four little word, four letter word that gets kind of like a bad reputation. It's really not nasty. It's, it's help. H-E-L-P. Ask for help. <laughs> and it, it doesn't mean you have to pay for help. If you're willing to do that, that's great. You can work with an expert who, who you might be compatible with, but at the very least, seek a mentor. So, you know, sometimes you can mentor from afar. You can mentor just by witnessing and observing someone. But if you're looking to build a business, I would encourage you to seek a mentor through SCORE. That's a function of the Small Business Administration score.org and you can look for any number of industries to find help in any number of resources to launch a business grow a business scale a business and then look into business associations your chambers of commerce are still very active and look to form sisterhoods and take advantage of all this good virtual education while it's available Exactly. I love that. You know, it, and it's, it's, it takes a village for so many things, but especially when we're doing something like this. And sometimes we're those women, I can often be that, that I can do it myself and I can figure this out. But I find that when I do ask for help and I do reach out and, and do it together with others, that, wow, it's a much better use of my time and my resources. And we get going where we want to go a whole, whole lot faster. So that's fantastic. Is there anything else that you want to share before we, before we close? Absolutely. I'm always looking for guest star nominations for Pep Talk with Tisha Hammond. It's a show where we celebrate entrepreneurs. So I welcome that. Lisa, I want to have you back on the show. I have such wonderful information to share about wellness and just being. And also want to encourage people to sign up for my Sunday morning uh, inspiration for your inbox. Mm -hmm. So you can check me out at TishaHammonds.com, T-I-S-H-A-H-A-M-M-O-N-D.com. All of my social channels are there and um, look for me on YouTube and LinkedIn as well. Fantastic. And I will have you put that link down in the comments. And if you can also put the title of your book there um, and while I have you on live, give us just a quick little plug for, for the book that you have and who that might be for. All right. So the book is Daily Devotional for Entrepreneurs, Your Season to Grow. The foreword is written by Dr. Dennis Kimbrough, who wrote Think and Grow Rich, A Black Choice in collaboration with the Napoleon Hill Foundation. And the book is for faith-based, profit-first entrepreneurs who have that mindset or who want to grow into that mindset. So what you'll see in this book is 12 weeks of daily devotional. A new devotional every day is meant to take maybe two to three, maybe four minutes of your time each morning so it doesn't monopolize your day there is scripture built in, there is prayer built in, and every day for 12 weeks, you get a business consulting prompt from me that helps you grow your business that day if you do it. And that's what you can expect in the daily devotional. It's available on at least 15 different platforms. And can I just say, Lisa, that yesterday it was confirmed that the Kentucky Christian University The Young Library purchased the book to catalog it for its school of business. So the book is now officially in a university system in addition to major retailers and your local independent bookstores around the world. I'm talking US, UK, Australia, other countries, I I won't name them all, but 
you get the point. And God That's is waiting, waiting, right? You are going places. I love that. And your message is going places because it's a message that we need to hear. And I love the fact that you're bringing your faith into that. And I think that's even more why that message is, is going out. So think about this, um, listeners, like, wow, 12 weeks of inspiration and motivation from not only um, from the Bible, but also from a great business coach. What a great way to finish out the year and go into this last quarter of the year or, you know, or to be starting off the new year with something like that. So I would encourage you to make sure that you check that out. And I'll, I'll have Tisha put that down in the comments as well. And I am offering my boost your energy guide, which uh, I, so many people I'm talking to lately, I just feel like we're just running in circles because, you know, everything's changing. There are so many things that we need to do and we're trying to keep up with it all. And I'm right there with you. So I put together a guide to help you take some habits that you may have in your day that are actually zapping you of energy and flip those around. So that way they can become ways that you can actually boost your energy. So I will post the link to that down below. If you'd like to go ahead and grab that, um, make sure to do that and uh, start putting those to use, especially as we head into the holiday season, because we all know we need a little bit more encouragement and we need a little bit more energy uh, as we head into that way. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Keisha. I have so appreciated you being on with us today. You're incredible. And I'm so blessed to know you, Lisa. Congratulations on your show. And All right. Happy other day. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks everyone for joining us today. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time.